Wait, wait, wait. I know you're probably wondering where I've been. It's been a couple weeks since I've uploaded to the channel and uh, I can explain. Actually, uh, I, I really can't. Um, I was about 75% done with the Ohm video, but then had a conversation with Ohm Record to speak about the situation that he's currently in with another member of the Vanos Gaming crew. So I said I'd wait to make the video just to see the outcome of that whole situation. But then that left me with nothing and no direction for the next video. But I thought about some of the biggest creeps on YouTube and now some of those creators I enjoyed as a teenager growing up. So I was thinking to myself, like, why don't I just make a video about them? Today on the channel, we take a look at five of the biggest creeps on YouTube. Some of these YouTubers could be arrested and sentenced, but some of them can still be out on the street, or in this case, on YouTube, free to do whatever they want. Now, of course, speaking about this type of topic needs to have some sort of sponsor. So thank you to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring today's video. Now, I've had my Ridge Wallet for almost a whole year, and one of the biggest things I wanted to pay attention to was the durability of the wallet, and more specifically, the elastic straps that holds the wallet together. Now, normally, over a year, a leather wallet would get some wear and tear, and the majority of the time, you could start to see cracks in the fabric because of the leather either getting really hot during the summer or really, really cold during the winter. Now, unlike leather wallets, the Ridge wallet is metal, which makes the material way stronger. And the elastic straps on my wallet have visibly no damage, which is great because I take my debit cards out a bunch throughout the week, which adds to the wear and tear of the wallet. Not only that, but during the summertime, I stay outside a lot. And also during the wintertime, I shovel the driveway. For those extreme weathers, I thought that it would get more damage than what it was, but there's visibly no issues with it. But even if there were issues, I wouldn't have to worry. Ridge Wallet comes with a lifetime warranty, so even if my Ridge Wallet broke, I could get a brand new one. With over 50,000 five-star reviews, I'm starting to see why people are ditching their old wallet for the Ridge Wallet, and you should too. Maybe you end up not liking the wallet. Well, Ridge Wallet also has you covered with a 99-day test run, and if you don't love it, you could send it back for a full refund. So do me a favor by clicking the link in my description below to view the products on their website, and at checkout, use code BILLS for 10% off your order. Now let's take a look at some of the biggest creeps on the YouTube platform. If you end up enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into it. That I would throw my fucking life away, right, for a bitch. Now, to start this video off, there's absolutely no list on YouTube that should leave EDP-445 off of it. EDP is probably one of the most documented predators on the internet, and his big exposure would happen in 2020 and 2021. Cold Raven was one of the creators who already called out the inappropriate behavior of EDP and how he interacted with his fans. In the eighth episode of Slaughterhouse, which was a running series on Cold Raven's channel, he would expose EDP for being a creep and for messaging underage fans. EDP uploaded a response video with a firearm basically threatening Cold Raven and any other future creators who would try to expose him. EDP did admit to messaging an underage girl, but he'd pretty much brush it off as a fan who was just messaging him for her boyfriend, and as a joke, he'd tell her to show him something. Again, he'd tell his friends that it was all just a big joke and that it didn't mean anything. But other creators were doing their own work to expose EDP behind the scenes. In March of 2021, a decoy would be sent out to try and capture the eye of EDP over on his Instagram. The decoy's name was Sophie, and this plan actually worked. He would be exposed for the world to see in April of 2021. This decoy was set up by Alex Rosen, who owned the channel Predator Poachers, and along with Alex Rosen was another channel called the CC Unit that would accompany Alex Rosen in this sting operation. During the video, which was over 40 minutes long, Alex was able to lure EDP to the desired meetup spot in order to expose him on video. Brian showed up to the spot and told Alex that he just wanted a cupcake. It wasn't anything malicious, he was just meeting up to get a cupcake. Now this became a meme along with fist bump? for quite some time, and even in the comments of my video talking about this a long time ago, and even on TikTok, the fist bump meme is still a meme till this day. Now, after this video went live, EDP came out with his own video trying to clear up the situation. Well, actually, he just uploaded a video pretty much shining light on Alex Rosen and how he was just as bad as he was. See, after EDP was exposed, people took to Twitter to dig up Alex Rosen to find out his malicious past as well. And it was really, really bad, but not as bad as EDP's. Or should I call you Alex Rosen? Whatever the f your name is, my whatever the f you prefer to be called. You know, here's the thing, my let me go ahead and holler at you for a quick second. See, 
I've been making videos for coming up on 11 years now, my nigga, you feel me? I've been in the game for a cool ass minute. I've seen punk ass bitch made whole ass motherfuckers like yourself come and fucking go. You know what I mean? I've seen, you know, piece of shit, dip shit, punk ass motherfuckers, trash goddamn content creators like yourself. You know what I mean? Go from 10,000 subscribers and then automatically jump up to 108K because they're over here, you know, piggybacking, you know, off of the success of other fucking YouTubers, my you feel me? You know, it, you know, it's a goddamn shame. It's a crime shame, my nigga, at the fact that these motherfuckers aren't entertaining enough to sit back and provide the people with content, you feel me, and have six and have subscribers subscribe and actually be entertained by their fucking content. Shortly after this video went live, EDP cleaned house on his YouTube channel by deleting or setting his videos to private, and then he'd be terminated off of the platform. EDP was attempting to create a website right after everything happened, and he was terminated off of YouTube, but nothing really came of it. Then EDP would jump on TikTok and other social media sites that weren't as well known to the public. Eventually, he'd be banned off of every site he tried to upload to. This was due to people sending in information about him and what he did to get banned off of YouTube. His fan base tried to have his back, which is admittedly weird, but those are the type of fans he attracted throughout his time on YouTube. Recently, EDP started his website and also uploaded an apology video to his platform. But with that being said, I want to take full responsibility for my actions that happened on April 21st, 2021. Um, the entire YouTube shit that went down, the entire YouTube incident. You know what I mean? Um, that went the fuck down. I'm not even going to get into it. You guys already know what the fuck happened. Um, I'm taking full responsibility for accountability um, for my actions. You know what I mean? Um, I have taken the proper measures and the proper steps forward to seek out help. Um, to try to, you know, get my head on right and to make sure that, you know, in the distant future that I do not hurt, you know what I mean, my loving, caring, supporting friends and family, because they, they are the ones that hurt the most. They are the ones that suffer the most. You know what I mean? Um, I've received numerous fucking messages, screenshots from my friends and family. Um, you know what I mean? Them getting harassed, them getting bullied, them getting fucked with by people. You know what I mean? And um, it's all my fault. But it's all too late for him and his apology. For months, he acted as if he did nothing wrong and dove in deeper with the meme, while also making a mockery of the whole entire situation, like this video where he eats a cupcake. Now, the reason EDP was able to walk off pretty much scot-free without having to serve any jail time was because of the botched job of Predator Poachers and Alex Rosen. Because he wanted to be the person to expose Bryant, he didn't get the authorities involved until much later, which hurt the investigation. EDP walked away without any jail time, which can't be said about the other creators on this list. The Minecraft space on YouTube has been home to some of the worst content creators who seek out a younger audience to take advantage of them. This creator that we are talking about right now was one of those weird creators who took a liking to one of their own fans. Jin Bop is a creator that we covered on this channel already, but was a creator who really didn't receive too much attention for the controversy until my video. Jin was a creator who took off during the mid 2010s and became so popular that he joined Skydive's Minecraft. This pairing would only benefit Jin so much more and with more attention, his videos went from thousands of views to hundreds of thousands of views. But we'd start to see Jin struggle with his mental health, with him updating his viewers in November of 2015, stating that he was taking a break from uploading. Hey, what's poppin' guys? So I need to start off first by saying sorry for the lack of a video today. Uh, John and Rut episode 2 was supposed to go up, but there's been, well, there's been a lot of complicated things going on. Now, I don't particularly like talking about personal issues, so I'll just say that there's been a lot of them. And it's a bunch of stuff that I need to sort out first. Now, I'm not trying to say that you guys aren't important to me or that I've forgotten about you because that's not the case. You guys are important to me. You guys all matter. It's just that lately I've been struggling with a lot, and it's probably fair to say that I'm actually at the lowest point I've ever been in my life. But, you know, like, that's all fine. Struggling is okay. 
we all come to that point where we just feel so helpless and lost that we have a hard time justifying it all. And that's just sort of where I am right now. But also know that we all come to that same point and that's when we learn the most about ourselves, you know? We'll come out of it a hundred times better and stronger than we were previously. That's just a part of growing up. And, you know, I'm 22, but I'm still really young. And stepping into YouTube has sort of forced me to adult a little faster than what I was prepared for. So I'm going to be on a hiatus briefly to sort some stuff out. What sucks about all this is that, unfortunately, I just won't be uploading videos for a little bit while I'm working on getting my shit together. And please don't take this as a, oh god, I can't handle life, nah, sort of thing. It's just that, emotionally, I haven't been in the best shape due to a lot of personal problems. And I wouldn't feel right sitting in front of a camera trying to offer you guys something that isn't genuine. After this, the videos resumed and things were pretty much back to normal up until August of 2016. This was the month where Jin would be arrested and detained by police at an airport. Now what was he doing in that airport? Well, he was trying to travel to meet up with an underage girl. This grooming of the minor went on for months before the flight, with Jin having multiple Skype calls with the minor, speaking about them meeting up and other sexual things. According to an affidavit obtained by Kotuku, it explains that Zhao is accused of producing and receiving CP, as well as enticing a minor and traveling with intent to engage in illicit SA. A court document alleges the defendant acted in a deliberate, sexually predatory manner toward a fan he knew to be a minor, 14 to 15 years old at the time, relevant here to, over many months in a manner disguised to groom her to participate in the production of CP, and further to participate in direct SA with the defendant, noting that the defendant's work involves creating content for YouTube with 10 to 14 year old children as the intended audience and with this serving as a possible entree into communications with minors. He is currently detained pending trial. Also in this report, it goes on to say the girl's parents allegedly obtained an audio recording in which Zhao can be heard asking her to take her clothes off. Zhao then gives advice to her on grooming her, you know, areas. The affidavit reads in the same conversation, Zhao allegedly acknowledged that she is 14, according to the affidavit. The two discussed meeting in person and having sexual relations throughout the year. In one conversation cited in the affidavit, they allegedly plotted to meet and have sex at a gaming convention in Florida. In an article from Distractify about Jin Pop, it states that court documents allege that the Minecraft player blamed his victim for the relationship and expressed suicidal ideations to a counselor while in federal custody. Jin Pop reportedly admitted to contacting two other minors through his channel, including a friend of the girl he was going to meet in Detroit. He also lied to his parents about the nature of his visit to the Midwest and asked to borrow the video camera before leaving. Jin was sentenced to a maximum of seven years in prison, but was released in June of 2022 for good behavior. This was an issue for many due to the uncertainty of if Jin would go back to uploading to his YouTube channel, because this would give him direct interactions with the same audience he groomed many years before. But there really hasn't been much information on Jin since his release. On Twitter, people suspected that a new YouTube account was created by him, but ended up being a hoax and it actually wasn't him. There are a lot of rumors, a lot of lies. You can do with that. They're just not true. Nothing ever went further than Twitter. Austin Jones was a YouTuber known for his acapella covers of various popular songs, and at his peak, he had around 500,000 subscribers on his channel and was going on tour with his music. But behind the scenes, Austin was preying on his innocent fans. Allegations against Austin Jones started to surface on the internet, and one person that helped spread more awareness towards Austin was another musician that was supposed to go on tour with him named Damien. During 2015, Damien would tweet out this video. Along with it was a tweet saying, Austin Jones' excuse for requesting inappropriate videos from minors is it was funny. Hmm, this says otherwise. This tweet had other underage fans coming out against Austin and the way he would interact with them. Tweets would start to pile up and screenshots of these interactions from Facebook or his iCloud account also popped up identifying him in this situation. Austin had nowhere to run and it started to look bad. A petition was also created to get him kicked off of the Vans Warped Tour, which received over 7,000 signatures. Austin would release a statement on Facebook Facebook following the allegations stating, to my friends, fans, and family, I wanted to explain why I've been off social media and have taken a break from my music. I've been in therapy, seeking help to discover why I communicated with my fans in a way that I have come to fully realize was not appropriate. I'm embarrassed. I'd have conversations online with girls that would involve me asking them to create a video of themselves twerking. 
Sometimes I'd make videos of myself doing some twerk moves in return. Here's the truth. I never asked them to do anything more than send a twerking video. Nothing ever went beyond that point ever. I recognize now how odd all of this sounds. I recognize how much I've embarrassed myself, my family, and my fans. That is the reason I'm coming forward today. I didn't want to wait another day to apologize. To anyone that I have made feel uncomfortable or awkward, I am deeply sorry for the hurt and shame I may have caused you. I never intended to mistreat or humiliate anyone. I also offer a heartfelt and sincere apology to my family, friends, and fans whom I've let down because of my actions. What was I thinking? That's the question I know most of you want to know, and quite frankly, I want to know too. I have decided to take the time to reflect and discover how to grow from this and become a better person. I owe that to my family, my friends, my fans, but most importantly to me. We as people are not made stronger from our successes, but by the journey we take through mistakes and misfortunes back to the top of the mountain. And that is where I intend to be at the end of this, at the top of the mountain with a strong sense of those who support me, a greater sense of self and greater connection to my fans. To those who have and will continue to support me, please know I never meant to let you down and I'm doing everything I can with the help of my family and friends to pick myself back up and be a better person. Thanks for believing in me. Please be good to each other and we will see see each other soon. After this statement, Austin would upload a video speaking about the situation called setting the record straight. Now this video did come out a couple weeks after this whole statement came out and you would say this in the video. There are a lot of rumors and a lot of lies. They're just not true. Nothing ever went further than twerking videos. There were never any nudes, never any physical contact. It never happened. So I just have to get that out there because nothing ever went further. Now. I was on tour at the time um, that this came out. This was in May, this was early May. Um, I was on the road when this got blasted out there. We were in Boston, it was in the middle of the night. And when this happened, I made the decision to come home from tour. I knew that I couldn't be on the road under this stress, under this pressure, under all of this drama and controversy online. It, it wasn't something that I could mo emotionally handle. Um, a lot of people ask, why did the initial statement take so long to get up? I put up a text statement and apology addressing the situation, but it took me about a week to do so. Um, people thought that I was being a coward. People thought that I didn't want to confront the situation. They thought that I was just blowing it off. That's not true. As I said, I was on the road. I was on tour. We were all the way in Boston. On that drive, the only thing I did was look at my phone and look at all the hate and death threats. I, I got lost in it. I would read every little comment, every little person telling me to myself, every person telling me that life, life wasn't worth living for me anymore. And I'm, I'm a pretty insecure person to where negative comments like that really impact me. Uh, it's not something I can just brush off. And uh, that entire ride home, I read those comments and I began researching different suicide methods. I started planning my suicide. Um, it's something I was, I was very, very serious about, and I was determined to do. Um, I finally got home. When we got back, I didn't even step foot in my house. My family took me immediately to the hospital, and I was hospitalized for my suicide tendencies. Um, they were very worried, and I understand why they were. Um, I had never been hospitalized before for my depression, or my past self-harm, or my suicide thoughts. So this was the first time and maybe I'll open up about it in a separate video, but this was a very, very interesting and emotional experience for me. During this video, he'd pass off the inappropriate interaction as just twerking videos and how it was just a dance move. He'd state that he never asked for anything more, just like how he did in his official statement, but he'd focus more on his attempt to take his own life. During this apology video, he spoke about how this situation was bad for his mental health and he focused on all the negative comments that started to flood his social media platforms, with people telling him he should end his life and that people hated him. He said that he wanted to end his life because of all the negativity. After this video, Austin continued to upload videos and work on music as if nothing happened. It wasn't until two years later when he would be arrested for soliciting CP from his fans. An investigation was started and a warrant was issued for Austin's phone and a warrant to investigate his whole house. 
There, the investigators found disturbing requests from Austin to his fans. Messages were revealed where Austin asked two different 14 year olds for very inappropriate pictures and videos on Facebook Messenger and to be sent either on the Messenger or on his iCloud email. These messages were persistent and pressured these girls into sending the videos that he wanted. Using his power dynamic, he'd pretty much force these girls into sending him what he wanted or else he'd stop speaking to them. After being arrested, he'd pay his own bail it would be placed under house arrest until his trial. The trial ended with Austin being sentenced to 10 years in jail. This case was one of the worst I've ever researched, probably ever. If you want to see more of the court documents and exactly what happened, I'd say look it up, but at your own discretion. There's a reason why it's not even linked in the description below, because it does get extremely graphic and he does use his power and his following and the fact that these young girls had crushes on him to get his way and be persistent to get whatever he wanted from them. Now his account would be terminated and now people just know of Austin Jones because of his controversy and not really his music. Red Wolf Gamer was a YouTuber who created his account all the way back in 2012. Back in 2012, gaming was huge on YouTube and Red Wolf would take advantage of the ever-growing genre. He'd upload a lot of Let's Plays to his channel, which generated him a decent fan base. Things were going well for his platform until he started to slow down in views and subscribers. Now there's really not much on Red Wolf and his content due to his account being deleted. This all happened in 2019. After his views started to struggle, he stated that he was going to return retire from video creation to become a truck driver, but shortly after he was arrested. On August 15th, 2019, Port Hope Police Department put out this status on Facebook saying, Child Exploitation, Port Hope updated press release. 32-year-old Ralph Sweeney of Port Hope, Ontario was arrested and charged with the following offenses. Lure a child, contrary to section 172 of the criminal code. Communicate with a person who is under the age of 18 for the purpose of facilitating an offense under subsection 163 with respect to that person make cp lure a child contrary to section 172 of the criminal code communicate with a person who is under the age of 18 for the purpose of facilitating an offense under subsection 153 with respect to the person sexual exploitation making sexually explicit material available to a child contrary to section 171 of the criminal code communicate with a person who is under the age of 18 for the purpose of facilitating an offense under subsection 153 with respect to the person. Sexual expectation. Sweeney has been held in custody pending a bail hearing scheduled for August 15th, 2019. Now after this post, Ralph's ex-girlfriend broke her silence on Twitter. Victoria wrote, hey, I have been having an over amount of support from everyone and thank you. We are taking it day by day. Ralph is a CM. There is proof and I've seen it and so have police. He is out on bail. His YouTube is gone because he can't talk to anyone under 18. She would continue to update the community on his trial, but his trial would continue to be pushed back time and time again up until January of 2023. Now there is an archive account for his videos and there is a screen recording of his trial that was posted onto the channel. From there, it does show that the case was dismissed, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's true or if he's if the case is dismissed or if the evidence presented in the case is dismissed. Now Red Wolf still has a big following and his fans are littered on that YouTube account, hoping that one day Ralph will come back to YouTube to create content once again. But this is very bad because we don't have the full scoop of everything because he was such a small creator and it's very hard to find any information outside of what his ex-girlfriend writes on Twitter and that's pretty much it. Now before we continue I have to point out that there are a bunch of weirdos on the internet that use their following or subscriber count in order to coerce these minors into disturbing situations. Today we focused on just five of those creators that did that but there are a lot so please be careful on the internet and do not let these creators take advantage of you if you are a minor. It's very easy to point out, but if you're young, you probably don't understand it. So if it seems like they're doing things maliciously or pressuring you into doing something, just 
block them. Cryotic was a gaming YouTuber that used to play with some of the biggest creators on the YouTube platform. Cry was playing with PewDiePie for quite some time up until their falling out, but this collaboration with the biggest gaming YouTuber on the website set Cry up to gain a lot of attention, but his world would come crumbling down around him in 2020. In light of the Me Too movement, where big YouTubers were being exposed for inappropriate behavior between their fans, Cry was called out for this behavior. These allegations amounted to over 15 females coming out against Cry, either publicly or privately. And of course, I should mention that not all of these females were under the age of 18. There were some that were adults when they were with Cry, but it's still pretty bad. Now, Beanie was one of the first females to come out against Cry and start this whole situation off. But sadly, her tweets against Cry have since been deleted not really knowing where to be found. Now again, there was a mixed perception within Cry's community. Some fans supported Cry and attacked Beanie, but some fans went against him and supported Beanie. But shortly after the allegations were posted by Beanie, Cry went on video to speak about the situation. From a lot of perspectives and a lot of angles and... Something that a lot of people, myself included, so... Before you start to think you're a hypocrite, I want you to understand that I'm coming at this from a perspective of someone who genuinely does not like past me because past me was immature. Past me didn't accept that he could actually be wrong. Past me thought he was infallible. Every single time somebody makes a mistake in the world, people are like, man, I hope nobody finds out. And I think the thing that people realize is that's because from the fuck get go, we're just taught, man, mistake, better hide it, otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. We forgot to actually teach lessons instead of just getting mad. And so people grow up with a lot of pride and they realize, man, I'm so perfect. So if anybody f up, I'm going to project a lot of insecurities on those people because I'm infallible. When I was younger, I started this YouTube because I didn't really have a purpose in life. I needed something to give me some kind of purpose. I didn't have any actual confidence. I got my confidence from people telling me, man, you're great. That was immature. Also doing this, I had never really left my room for so long. I'd grown so much that I didn't realize I was a f adult, but I was mentally a child. That is not an excuse for the record. I've always felt disingenuine because I was never open with people about things because I was always hiding things. I was never able to be genuine with people anymore after the fact that I cheated on my girlfriend with people who I didn't realize were even underage in the first place. So yes, I'm sorry. But I promise you I'm not that same anymore. And I resent that person who I was. And I'm sorry that I was hiding who I was this whole time. I never wanted to be on a pedestal in the first place. And I think that's because I was always afraid of people knowing who I really was. Just some lonely guy trying to find a purpose. Just some lonely guy who genuinely is someone who would be considered a basement dweller. But luckily I live in Florida, so there's no basements. It took me 31 years. It took me until 10 minutes before my 31st birthday to realize I was going in a constant projection of nothing because I never really accepted who I was. I always made excuses and I'm f sorry for that. I'm not going to say any more because this is not some pity party. This is more addressing the things that need to be said. More so than giving people their dirt or tea or whatever the f*** they need. I just feel like people need to be able to express themselves, be them victims or not. I always considered myself a victim because of the way I was raised. However, that kind of mentality made me the actual instigator, as opposed to the protagonist that I always thought I was because everyone said you're so perfect all the time. During this video, he just claimed that he never knew these girls' ages and that he never met up with them in real life. Linked in the description of this video was a link to his unlisted hour-long live stream where he rambles on about different topics, but you could tell that he wasn't in the right headspace. After this, he'd release a statement onto Twitter stating, the last video was posted during a manic state, and it's not accurate of what a proper apology looks like. I deeply regret it, as I never let the actual discussion properly be had. This will be rectified in a future video after I properly 
address those affected. Individually, instead of how I chose to haphazardly go about this vain attempt to save face like a coward so many people have done before me. I do not want to delete it because everyone's concerns and complaints are 100% valid and should not be skirted around anymore. I apologize for my actions, but I promise to deliver a proper, coherent explanation keeping truly factual description with no attempt at garnering sympathy, but addressing what needs to be said when people are hurting. I needed to come to grips that I was projecting my own insecurities constantly, telling people I never cared what people thought of me. And it is time for myself as a man to address that and so much more. Thank you for your patience while I take care of these personal matters in the next few days. And I'll let my actions in the future speak for me more than these words here ever will. This situation was all over the place. Some girls came out in support of Cry, stating that he was comforting and never stepped over boundaries but again, a lot of victims came out against Cry. One victim in particular went by the name of Midnight Circus. She recounted this history she had with Cry and how after they had a falling out, he made her feel bad for breaking up with him. In her depiction of what happened between them, she'd state, the relationship didn't feel right. And at the time, he was demonstrating a few unhealthy habits that ultimately pushed me away and placed a rift in between us. We both decided to remain friends. And during his sudden popularity in YouTube, we managed to talk to each other but I decided to be less active in his content creating because he began to value his privacy a lot, which I understood considering how many were desperate to unmask him, but this private life would also culminate an unhealthy friendship between us. Over time, he began to change around me, asking for sexual favors, behaving more manipulatively and having complete disregard for my feelings when I would attempt to help him. He told me our breakup caused him trust issues and a horrid blow to his confidence when I approached him about it, saying it couldn't be helped because of what I did. Knowing I broke his heart and caused his foul change in, in personality, I felt sorely responsible and guilty for breaking up with him. It took me a few years to realize that I shouldn't have. So excuse my young self making this big mistake and gave into whatever demand he asked of me. Some of his request was to call him master when we spoke, sending him nude photos and explicit videos. We spoke on Skype, but he would only reach out to me in the middle of the night when he wanted sexual favors. His kindness, subtle guilt trips, and attention to me led me to feeling guilty for ending our relationship and breaking his heart. Midnight Circus would continue with, Ryan isn't dumb. The fact he says that he didn't know and was lied to by multiple girls who were all underage is quite honestly bullshit. Absolute bullshit. It's okay to not be certain of what to think of next, but don't sit there and blindly support, clamoring to tell him he's so strong when some of you haven't even bothered to share words with Beanie or his other victims or give them support. After this, everyone went silent. Tweets were deleted and evidence against Cry was hidden. There really hasn't been an update to Cry, and Cry has been hidden and hasn't showed up on his channel in over three years. Hey, uh, hello. Post editing bills here and uh, I wanted to say that there was a mega thread that was released I think either during or after everything happened between Cry and all of his victims and yeah I'll post it either in the description and you guys can go check out all of the all the things that happened throughout that time because there is a lot that is documented and it was updated recently saying that even the the original poster doesn't know what's happening behind the scenes but I'll leave a link to it in the description below so you guys can go check it out and let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. Now, my biggest question is did Cry get away with it? Because if he's still monetized on YouTube, that means he's still bringing in money every single month for residuals of people watching his old videos. Let me know in the comments below if you feel like Cry got away with it. Now, in summary, YouTube can be a harmful place. Well, scratch that. It's not just YouTube, but all of the internet, especially for young kids or teenagers who don't know any better. So please be mindful of who you interact with online and understand their motives. If they seem creepy, then they probably are, and you shouldn't really make excuses for them, regardless if you're a fan of them or not. But anyways, this is the end of the video. If you have any YouTubers or a video idea that you want me to look at or, or make in the future, you can leave it in the comments below, or you can also join the Discord. Uh, I'd suggest joining the Discord because it's pretty fun over there. It's a little it's a little inactive, but... um. If you come over, just say hi and we can we can make it more active. Also, you can follow me on Instagram where I don't really post that much, but you know, join me everywhere, I guess. But um 
if you made it this far, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, leave a like. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.